Hello, dear participants. As an interpreter, I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Alex Sorokin, PhD and Executive Director of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. This is the third lecture dedicated to the issues of matching of constitution types in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. This topic is essential as knowing the nature of individual gives us an opportunity to work on the preventive therapy basing on the peculiarities of the concrete constitution. Thus, this cycle of lecture is important not only from theoretical but also from the practical point of view. Today we are going to discuss another constitution type or another syndrome. In traditional Chinese medicine it is called emptiness of yin. In Ayurveda it corris corresponds to Pitta Vata constitution necessarily followed by deficiency of Avalambaka Kapha. A complex of stable structural, anatomic, physiological, adaptive and uh, psychological features of the body, which had been formed under the influence of the innate and acquired factors. This is what constitution is. The modern research in epigenetics shows that the innate factors or genetics of a person may be influenced by the outer changes, which gives us a huge opportunity to work in prevention of genetic diseases. Knowing the constitution type of a person allows the specialist to determine the predispositions to different diseases to start working on preventive me measures and treatment. There are three re regulation systems pointed out in modern medicine and in Ayurveda they are identified through more complicated notions that are known as Vata, Pitta and Kapha. There are nine constitution types based on dual combination of doshas depending on the dominance of one of them. And the tenth type is called Tridosh and it is known as a balance of all three doshas in an individual. The percentage, percentage of people of Tridosh type is extremely low, about 1% of the planet population. Look at the chart that we use in our lecture to match the constitution types in Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. Emptiness of yin is highlighted in red as we are going to discuss it today. Emptiness of yin matches Pitta constitution bounded with Vata in its duality. You probably met people with emptiness of yin. Sitting in a classroom or at a party or elsewhere, they would take off their shoes and put their feet on the cold floor, saying that it makes them feel better. Usually these people are very active, communicative, have a successful career, but if we're talking about the problems they have, one of the things that brings discomfort to them would be dry skin. Even the expensive, good quality moisturizers would not help them to get rid of the dryness no matter how long they try. They start suffering from dryness of eyes and start using remedies that would help them to moisture them. They notice that when they need to recite, declaim or talk to their friends for a long time, there appear dryness in the throat and they need to drink water to remove it. You may notice that these people have pink or red ruddiness of face. Sometimes women even try to camouflage it. Let's determine the syndrome through some clear characteristics. It is a complex of constitutional features developing as a result of the lack of yin and manifesting through lubrication disorder, avalambaka kapha deficiency, saturation of organs and tissues disorder, form formation of the empty inner heat. One of the major complaints of people of this constitution type is dryness. Dryness will manifest itself on different levels. It can be dryness of skin, dryness of hair, followed by an excessive hair loss, dryness of lips, uh, perlishes in the corner of lips, dryness of mucosa, as well as dryness of a bronchial tree, followed by dry coughing, dryness of gastrointestinal and urogenital tracts. People of Pitavata constitution predisposed to anxiety and irritation. They are impulsive, active, have problems with sleep. As for the body structure and appearance, they tend to be skinny, suffer from constipation, high heart rate. If we're talking about what lies underneath these symptoms, our attention should be drawn to the primary elements, the combination of which gives us the full explanation of all these symptoms of the constitution state. In the picture you can see two monotypes, Pitta and Vata, combined into the dual composition Pitta-Vata at the top and Vata-Pitta at the bottom. 
As you may see, the dominant elements of this constitution are fire and air, or tejas and vayu, as we would call it in Sanskrit. It doesn't mean that other two elements, water and ether, are not presented in the combination. It only means that they are also there, but in a smaller proportion. Water element is supposed to be in deficiency in such a constitution type. To make sure the result of your assessment is accurate, use the Nidana tab and its sub-tab Pancha Mahabhut. The first step in the work with the tab is to find the dominating element to identify the constitution type correctly. Thus, vata imbalance can be caused by the dominance of ether and manifest through coldness or it can be caused by the dominance of air and manifest through dryness. In this case, in the balance tab, you would only see the dominance of vata dosha while, while nidana tab would show you the root of the dominance. Fire would dominate in this type of constitution and vata would be subdominant. But in this picture, you can see that fire is subdominant and vata is dominant. It was made on purpose, so you, you would remember that in the cases of chronic diseases connected with dryness of vata, vata would dominate. One of the main features of this constitution type is a stably low jala. The specialist uh, should also remember that this syndrome is not about dominance, but about emptiness on the background of dominance. Let's turn to traditional Chinese medicine. First of all, we'll talk about the hieroglyph that stands for emptiness of yin. Here you can see two hieroglyphs, the old version on the left and the newer version on the right. The hieroglyph consists of two graphemes. The one that reminds uh, the letter B denotes the moon and another one denotes the hill. Together they mean the dark or the shadowy side of the hill. Now let's try to understand why we call this syndrome emptiness of yin. On the first graph you can see that the ideal bal uh, see the ideal balance of yin and yang. In constitutional emptiness of yin we get the following situation. The yin beginning is lowered in the body while yang stays at the same level. It is important to understand that in this situation yang is not in excess it has not increased. Yang beginning is in its norm, but the yin beginning is not able to complement yang as it, it is too weak. As a result of this weakness, yang doesn't get the needed control and begins expressing in an abnormal way, thus eventually it would start hitting and drying the body. That is why the syndrome is called the empty inner heat syndrome. Now we know that this constitution state is caused not by the dominance of fire, but by the lack of yin. We associate Avalambaka deficiency with emptiness of yin. When we think about yin and its functions in the body, the first thing that comes into our minds is that yin is connected with production and distribution of fluids in the body. We match yin functions with functions of Avalambaka kapha, as Avalambaka is one of the is one that deals with all the processes of lubrication of the body as well as production and dis distribution of fluids. In Sanskrit, the word of Lambaka stands for the one that supports, man maintains. The human body cannot survive without fluids, so of course Lambaka is a supporter of life. From the point of view of physiology, Avalambaka is associated with mineral component composition of the body, liquids that is provided first of all by the nutrients coming from the gastrointestinal tract, resulting decomposition of food and intake of an additional portion of salts, forming, forming the osmotic concentration of the internal environment which is a crucial homeostatic parameter influencing all the biochemical processes. Pathogenic changes in the osmotic concentration can be considered itself as an imbalance of yin and yang. Another important thing to mention is that Avalambaka is directly connected with the control of Agni or yang, as Agni is controlled by regulation of water-salt metabolism. As you see in the picture, 45% uh, human body is presented by solid tissue, 
and more than a half of the body is presented by fluids, where 30% is tissue fluids, 7% is blood, and 28% is cell fluids. Intestinal fluid Intestinal fluid of cells, being one of the components of Lambaca capha, controls the internal environment through the regulation of the osmotic, osmotic pressure. As for the function systems controlling the fluids in the body, there is an area in the body, according to sources of Ayurveda, called trika, that includes lungs and heart, and it is mentioned that lungs and heart are directly responsible for Avalambaka Kapha. The regulation of Avalambaka Kapha by lungs is carried out, first of all, through processes of gas metabolism, and second of all, through through osmoregulation and water salt metabolism. And the key process of re regulation is formed by, by angiotensin, transforming enzyme that is the part of the strong humoral system of stabilization of the arterial blood pressure through changing the water balance in the body. As for the heart, there is a hormone called atropiptin produced in the right atrium in response to changes in the water balance. Entering kidneys, atriopeptin makes them remove the excess of salts. To say more about regulation of Avalambaka Kapha from the point of view of physiology, let's turn to the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Here you can see chain of processes that ends up with producing of the strongest vasoconstrictor hormone angiotensin second that puts on action the whole pleiad of physical effects starting with the sympathetic activity which is connected with the growth of fire and the process of production of aldosterone through which angiotensin second controls the mineral metabolism now let's talk about the possible causes of emptiness of yin or deficiency of avalambaka kapha here, Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine name the similar reasons. Traditional Chinese medicine uh, points fragility of parents' bodies as one of the first possible reasons. State of the parents' bodies could be uh, the one that predisposed the child to getting a deficiency of yin, or at the moment of conception, parents themselves could have the empty heat syndrome. Ayurveda adds up to this the importance of karmic factors needed for the embodiment of certain dharma. As for the irrational diet, it is all quite clear. Even if a person doesn't suffer from emptiness of yin after eating some hot food and by hot we mean spicy and dry or salty food, it would lead to deficiency of yin and the valambaka kapha. If to eat such food regularly, we can superficially form the emptiness of yin syndrome. As for people of Pitavata constitution, such an irrational diet can become a provoking factor for the development of the diseases associated with this constitution type, while for people of other constitution type, the state would be a reversible character, meaning it would be possible to restore the water balance after changing the diet. It is also mentioned that emptiness of yin can be caused by the diseases with the features of heat such as all the inflammatory diseases followed by fever and manifestation of not only inter internal but also the external pathogenic heat resulting in the processes leading to the excess of fire. Another reason of Avalambaka, de Avalambaka deficiency is the diseases of chronic blood loss or fluids loss. Diseases connected with the blood loss, such as diseases of gastrointestinal tract and reproductive system, when constant bleeding can cause weakening of yin component. Loss of fluids takes place, uh, first of all, in diseases followed by diarrhea, when there is a loss of microelements and liquids. For people who have this genetic predisposition to emptiness of yin, one of the impo important factors would be a clim climatic factor. Those people would feel uncomfortable in a dry climate because such climate would cause for them a number of problems with health. Also, the reasons of emptiness of yin uh, or avalambaka kapha deficiency are an excessive sexual activity and aging. 
aging is inevitably followed by loss of fluids. Senile decrepitude is followed by the great deficiency of liquids. And the last factor is connected with the biorhythms of the body. There is a period covering time from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. when the body is able to harmonize the water balance and restore water metabolism naturally. If the person stays up after 11 p.m., it will cause the forming of a tendency to development of emptiness of yin. Let's see what features we'll find in the cardiointervallogram of a person with emptiness of yin or of a lambaka kapha deficiency. First thing to check is spectrum equivalence of the syndrome. You can see three ranges of the diagram, the green range, the red and the blue one. Total power index is an index that you would need to analyze first. For this constitution state, it would be around 1000 milliseconds squared, which tells us that people of this type has sufficient amount of energy needed for daily activities. These people are active and, and enthusiastic, though there is no excess of energy in them. You can see that the red you can see that the red low frequency range is dominating as it takes around 50 or 60 percent of the whole picture. The blue range or very low frequency range takes about 25-30 percent. Despite the domination of ranges, there is no absolute axis of the red and the blue ranges, but there is an absolute deficiency of the green range in this constitution type as it never goes higher than 15 percent. So taking spectrum as a guideline and knowing in that what way it is connected with maha doshas, you can easily identify person of Pitta Vata type of constitution. An average duration of the heart cycle varies in the range of 625 to 725 milliseconds. Mode value of this constitution type is 675. Automatic balance, one of the most important indices, will be in the range of 170 to 200 milliseconds. Restoration index in people of Pitavata constitution with emptiness of yin is from 6 to 8. Yin yang index is lower than 100 uh, or 200 conventional units, which tells us about lowering of yin and domination of yang. Adequacy index is higher than 60. This index is to show us the correlation between the amount of the resources of the body and the rate of the consumption of the resources. In this case, we will see tendency to deficiency of the base of the resources. Centralization index of 1.5 to 3 points shows the slight tendency to psychogenically induced stress condition. Integral indices, as a rule people of this type will be in an average rate corridor the functional health of 50 to 75 percent. Stress level of the regulation system is in the wide range uh, norm, wide range of norm of 112 uh, 20 to 200 uh, conventional units. Adaptation price or the speed of spending energy is in the green corridor of norm in case there are no chronic diseases and diseases in acute phases. In analyzing subdoshas, we will focus on uh, four key subdoshas that are to be responsible for the map of symptoms, symptoms in the body. Uh, the combination of these subdoshas would give different picture of symptoms uh, representing different syndromes. First, uh, pay attention to Pachaka Pitta. Pachaka Pitta is a reflection of the inner fire connected with the digestion fire as increase of digestion fire is a reflection of the increase of the inner fire. In people suffering from an ep emptiness of yin, Pachaka Pitta is uh, stressed or has a tendency to stress shifting to the upper corridor of the normative values to the border value of four conventional units. Then we pay attention to Apanavata. Apanavata regulates physical processes of the lower floor of the gastrointestinal tract.
a Panavata projection in the syndrome depends on many factors and can manifest through deficiency or through the axis pattern as you see in the picture. One of the main features of the graph in emptiness of yin would be deficiency of Valambaka Kapha, of course. It is important to remember that the analysis of subdoshas requires a series of tests to see the projection of subdoshas in dynamic, because basing only on the assessment, on, on one assessment, there is a danger to get an uh, incorrect, incorrect result, as subdosha is an unstoppable physiological process that moves inside the certain ancillary circuit. Oscillatory circuit, I'm sorry. Now let's turn to Paul's characteristics of emptiness of yin. If you use the palpation diagnostic methods and the three point eval evaluation system of Vasant Lad, you'll see that in this person, according to the three point system, Pitta would be dominant, Vata would be subdominant, uh, but in general, both of them would be higher than Kapha. That would be in deficiency, and uh, which is it is quite expected. If we take the ten point system that we use in Vedapals, we'd also see dominance of Pitta, subdominance of Vata Dosha, and deficiency of Kapha. Now let's look at the cardio intervalogram. On the cardio intervalogram, you'd see the features of Mandukagati and Sarpagati, but only in the case of pure Vata and Pitta types. For pitta vata type, you'd see the features of quail pulse and partridge pulse uh, with the high, high waves and sloping top in the form of the plateau. It is important to have a skill to see the features of the constitution type in the pulse, as it is an, an additional method to ad identify pitta vata type without any mix mixture of kapha. Another indicator we pay attention to is vega or heart rate frequency. People of Pitta Vata type have a tendency to a high rate, uh, higher than 80 and 85 beats per minute. Tala indicates uh, the, the rhythmicity. Dominating pita, pita would make the pulse elastic. Such people have rather a strong pulse. You can feel it through palpation. The pulse would be not that strong as in pure Pitta, but much stronger that, than the filamentary pulse of pure Vata type. The program will show you that the digestion fire is in the range between Tikshna and Vishama. It means that one, uh, on one hand it is an unstable fire typical for Vata Dosha, and on the other hand it is a strong fire typical for Pitta Dosha. You'd see that state uh, only in case of the imbalance, in case of the harmony, Agni would be normal. In bioenergy tab, you need to check the total bioenergy level. It should be around 75%. Also, there would be a local increase of the blood circulation speed and tension in the organs predisposed to diseases according to the constitution type. In our case, they are liver, gallbladder and intestine. Heart, colon and kidneys would be slightly emaciated. Though in this uh, case, in case of an acute constipation, there may, may be tension in the colon. What kind of diseases are typical for constitutional emptiness of yin or deficiency of Lambaka Kapha? First of all, it is important to say that diseases in these people are of a prolonged chronic character. There are... they are... Uh, the accompanying symptoms of constitutional emptiness of yin are losing of weight, dryness, heat and emaciation. One of the main features is dryness. Dryness is the first sign of the imbalance of this kind. If the person doesn't make any steps toward harmonizing the state, it, would, it may develop to more serious problems. First of all, it is dryness of the mucos mucosal tissues, which is in the age after 35 and 40 leads to motor disorders and disorders connected with defecation. As a result of dryness of the mucosal, um, these people may also get a chronic tonsillitis or the dysbiosis or, or lymphoepithelial pharyngeal ring. 
Also at the end of gannet functioning, men and women of this type may suffer from climacteric syndrome. Don't mix it up with climax or menopause syndrome as the climacteric syndrome appears only in 10-15% of men and women. In traditional Chinese medicine it is denoted as an empty fire burning the body from inside and it's considered uh, as a declination from the normal slackening of the gannet fun function. Let's start with one of the most well-expressed symptoms of emptiness of yin, uh, it is constipation. Traditional Chinese medicine uh, explains the occurrence of constipation through the lack of fluids or dehydration of the colon. It is quite a fair thing to say, but there are nuances that are also important to know. Ayurveda claims that there is constipation of vata, pitta and kapha type, which is also fair enough. If we draw the link between Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine, here we would see that, uh, that according to classic description of constipation in emptiness of yin, it fully matches the constipation of pure pita type with the increased acne or acute pita constipation in the diseases followed by fever. There are also be symptoms telling us about the physiological accentuations manifesting through anger, irritation and changes in the emotional behavior in general. As a result of non-removal of toxins, such people would get a bad body smell and headaches and insomnia. Lingual examination would show the yellow coating on the tongue. The genesis uh, of constipation is connected with a disorder in the bile secretion. Bile is a natural stimulator of the intestinal motility. And the disorder in the outflow, outflow of bile, in case of the feverish state and increased pitta, causes the general tension of the hepatobiliary system and we get the acute pitta constipation. Dryness, roughness and lack of fluids correlates with chronic vata constipation in Ayurveda. Thus people of this constitution type get some kind of mixed dryness dryness conditioned by fire and dryness conditioned by wind. That is why th uh, the approaches of treatment of the state has to be mixed. Cardio intervallographic criteria of dryness of the colon. On the diagram you'd see tension of the colon channel. Lowering of energy takes place in case of chronic constipation and chronic motor disorder when defecation happens minimum once a day. You should also pay attention to the kidney's channel. You may witness the disruption of water electrolyte balance that may also be one of the components in the process of forming of the state. Analyzing tendencies of changes in subdoshas, you'd see the increased fire that dries the mucosal tissue in the gastrointestinal tract. There would also be tension in pranavata that tells us about certain uh, psycho-emotional problems accompanying emptiness of yin disorder of apanavata that is connected with the colon motility and finally the decrease of lambacocapha as the main cause of dehydration. If we look at the amount of water that comes into our body within 24 hours we'd see the following picture. We intake about 1 liter of water with food and 1.5 liters additionally. In average within 24 hours we drink about 2.5 liters of water. Let's add to this one 1.5 liters of saliva that we swallow during a day plus uh, up to 2.5 liters of gastric juice, uh, 2 liters of pancreatic juice, 2 liters of intestinal juice, about uh, 50 and 60 milliliters of colon juice, but uh, 100 uh, up to 200 milliliters of water get removed with the excrement. So, if to sum up the quantity of water that incomes in the gastro to the gastrointestinal pipe, we'd get about uh, 8 up to 10 liters in the entrance and only 150 uh, up to 300 milliliters in the output. And it is a very interesting question, why with all the incoming water there can appear dryness of the colon? 
several facts of molecular biology. Let's look at the mechanism of, of absorption of water in the intestine and see how yin controls yang, how avalambaka kapha controls agni, and in what way it is connected with water salt, metabolism, electrolytes and osmos. Then we try to speculate on the question why people of this type suffer from dryness. Then, when the chyme enters the cavity of the intestine, the intestine starts to work as a reservoir where the plasma begins to exuberate active, actively from the blood vessels of the walls of the small intestine, and there occurs the phenomenon called water recycling. Water recir recirculation is necessary to level the osmotic concentration of the chyme. The concentration of salts and electrolytes. The key process in water resorption is presented by a unique structure located on the basal lateral membrane of the enterocyte. Enterocyte is a cell of the intestinal mucosa. A molecule called sodium potassium ATP phase is also located on the basal membrane. Due to the work of this molecule, the cell the cell constantly pumps the ions of sodium, chlorine, and then passively goes water. Thus, the process of regulation of absorption of electrolytes, sodium, and chlorine, in fact, is the complex process of regulation of absorption of water. And such an absorption of water that could be a crucial point in regulation of dryness of the colon is controlled by the very aldosterone hormone that we talked about earlier in the lecture. The process of reabsorption of salts and water itself is of an optional character. There is a bounded reabsorption that is functioning as a non-stop automatic mechanism and there is an optional reabsorption that is put in action only when it is needed and regulated by certain hormonal systems. Another process that works towards moisturizing of the wall of the colon is a process of secretion of phlegm. On the surface of the colon mucosa, a certain mucous layer is formed that, moist, that moisturizes the colon. To sum up, manifestation of different features of fire is connected with the changes of the osmotic properties of the intestinal tissue and with the higher tonus of the sympathetic nervous system. You can see that when sodium gets reabsorbed and gets to the lateral area, the water follows and gets to the internal environment of the body. There is a hypothesis that says uh, that people of Pitta Vata constitution have an excessive osmolarity of the environment which pulls water from the intestinal cavity in vast, leading to a deficiency of water in the cavity of the intestine and colon. Such a hypothesis is of a theoretical nature and took place based on a number of observations in comparison of Ayurveda and modern medicine and a substantial clinical experience. As for sympathetic system, it is important uh, here that it controls motility and as a result of the increase of the tonus of the sympathetic nervous system, which may be not absolute but relative as a result of lowering uh, of the tone of parasympathetic regulation at the level of smooth intestinal myocytes. There is a natural situation that leads to the spasm of certain functional areas called sphincters. The result is a slowdown in the passage of the intestinal content, contents from the functional compartment to another. From one functional compartment, I'm sorry, to another. Now let's turn to the methods of treatment of constipation, of emptiness of yin. You discuss some general, uh, we discuss some general approaches of achieving two main goals. First is moistening of the intestines and lowering of fire. According to traditional Chinese medicine, if you suffer from emptiness of yin, one of the main rules for you is to drink a glass of the boiled water in the morning on an empty stomach which would help to moisture the intestinal mucosa. According to Ayurveda it would be even better to drink a glass of warm milk with ghee to treat the dryness with oil. 
It would be also beneficial to drink tea with licorice during a day or eat something that moistures the intestine. You can see some examples on the slide. Traditional Chinese medicine recommends to drink tea of seeds of sienna. In Ayurveda, aloe juice is more preferable for this state and it is really helpful in lowering a fire. You can see it in its formula, but in some cases, with the accompanying excess of vata dosha, it would be useful to add to aloe juice a component that would soothe vata. The ideal component for such a purpose would be fennel. There is also a drug in traditional Chinese medicine that can be helpful in an acute state. It is uh, Ma Ren Run Chang, one pills, uh, with the seeds of cannabis. It is good for dryness and heat in stomach and intestine. We cannot say that Tripala is an equivalent to this drug, as Tripala is, uh, has its own nuances, and in some special cases it may be useless to take it. Tripala is more effective in treatment of chronic constipation than in treatment of an acute constipation. The reasons of such state of things we'll discuss later on. Polygonum multiforum uh, is a herb that is quite available on the market. It has an ideal formula of empty, uh, for emptiness of yin. Uh, pita vata minus, kapha plus, so it is great for moistening. It is considered that this herb supplies and nourishes jing and blood, uh, removes toxins and heat, moistens and relaxes the intestine in a soft way without drying it. In case of chronic constipation in emptiness of yin, the key tasks according to Ayurveda would be moistening of the intestine and removal of the wind. Thus, in an acute constipation, we moisten the intestine and extinguish the fire. In chronic constipation, we moisten the intestine and remove the wind. It is important to eat oily food. Though in pita dominance, oily food is not preferable due to the strong influence of vata and presence of dryness, oil becomes a necessary component. It is also necessary to eat crops to increase the amount of the contents of the intestine. Avoid the food that may have a drying effect such as legumes, cabbage, mushrooms, although those products are not prohibited. In case you make a cabbage stew, it would it uh, would be helpful to use some appropriate spices such as uh, asafoetida, that is a perfect spice for removal of the wind. Of the wind. One of the best sellers among the Ayurvedic remedies is Tripala. Now let's discuss why Tripala is more effective in treatment of chronic constipation than in treatment of an acute constipation. In the situation when the chronic constipation is getting worse, it would be helpful to add sienna, rhubarb, harmonized by ginger and fennel. The course of intake of these herbs should be short and irregular, and irregular because we see vata plus in their formulas, and it is not possible to remove the wind if we use remedies that accumulate it. In chronic constipation, dryness is prevailing first of all because of dominance of vata and wind. Dryness may be triggered by heat, but at some point it may start developing on the background of the strong wind. In this case, we should use remedies of a warming and hot energy. Haritaki and Bibhitaki are of a hot Ushna energy. Due to the very warming qualities of Haritaki and Bibhitaki, Tripala has a strong laxative effect. It is possible to use Tripala in acute constipation as Amalaki is of a cooling energy. But anyway, such a combination of components in the remedy would be better for chronic states. Let's turn to the Western clinical herbal therapy and check out one of the compositions that is suggested. It is a unique composition. Many other herbal additives were created on the basis of this composition. The first component in the composition is peppermint. Let's check its formula. Kapha minus Vata neutral, pita plus. Its constitution is katu, spicy, ushna, hot, and its vipak is also katu, 
so it is natural that it would increase fire as it is of a hot nature. So we may start having doubts that peppermint may be of any help in treatment of constipation. So we should turn to a pharmacological effect of peppermint. It has sedative, anabolic and spasmolytic effect. Secretory effect of peppermint is connected with secretion of the gastric juice, thus increasing the fire, so we are not interested in this function. Uh, but due to the first three effects, we would keep mint in the composition in a portion not more than one gram because of the hot char characteristics and drying effect. The next component is potagamire. It, it has a different constitution. Madhura, sweet taste, sita, cooling energy, madhura vipak, sweet taste after di digestion. So the formula of plantaga Meyer would be kapha plus, which is great because only sufficient kapha would help us to moisten the colon. Pita vata minus, which is also what we need. Due to its cooling effect and increasing kapha, we give plantaga Meyer 4 grams in the compositions. Another effect of plantaga Meyer are laxative, anti-inflammatory and secretory. Here the secretory effect is connected with the production of phlegm, which is a great effect for stimulating kapha. It also has a slight sedative, hypotensive, gastroprotective effects and also an ability to stop metastasis of tumor. The next component in the composition is Matricaria chamomilla. Its constitution is ticta, katu, bitter and spicy taste, neutral energy and katu vipak or spicy taste after digestion. So the formula of uh, chamomile is vata plus so it, is, it increases dryness. So why to use it in the composition? Chamomile has the strongest anti-inflammatory and restoration effect of all the herbs in the composition. Restorative function uh, is important because the colon gets injured in constipation. The next uh, component is Yashtimathu or Glyceriza Clabra. Its formula is Kapha plus Vita uh, Vata Pitta minus. <clears throat> this is a great herb to balance all the components in the composition. We use this herb to increase fluids and moisten the colon. Its constitution is Madhura, sweet, guru, heavy and snitha, oily. Its cold energy and sweet taste after digestion would also increase kapha. Another, another component is a medicinal fennel. It levels up the drying influence of chamomile due to its neutral nature and its spasmolytic and carminative effect. The fol following herb are commonly used in treatment the following herbs, I'm sorry, are commonly used in treatment of constipation in, in people of kapha constitution, but they are to be used carefully in emptiness of yin. A first is Frangula Alnus. Uh, its constitution is bitter taste, hot energy and spicy taste after digestion. Its formula is Vata plus Pitta Kapha minus. It is great that it reduces Pitta, but it, it also reduces Kapha and increases Vata, which leads to dryness. So let's check its pharmacological effect. It has a laxative effect, but it happens due to the increase of tonus of the intestinal peristalsis, due to the spasm. So this effect is a questionable one. Frangula also inhibits absorption of water in the colon, thus keeping the water in the colon, but it may lead to the dehydration of the surrounding environment, which, which is something that we don't want. And the last component is Siena Alexandrina. One of the things uh, that we should know about uh, cassia or sienna is that it can be different and one must be aware of what kind of sienna is needed in different cases. Sienna is related to legumes and we already mentioned that one should limit the intake of legumes. There is a type of sienna called marcantica or cassia acutifolia. It decreases vata and kapha and neutral for pitta. Cassia tora or coffee beans or chakra marda in Sanskrit. Uh, the constitution of the leaves is sweet taste, cold energy, 
and sweet taste after digestion. The constitution of the seeds is hot energy, spicy taste and spicy vipak. Thus you can see that the leaves and seeds have the opposing effects, moistening and drying. Cassia apsus, cold energy, spicy vipak, vata neutral, kapha pita minus. Other types of cassia are cassia auriculata or uh, avartake, cassia fistula, cassia sedentalis. So when we mention senna, it, would sh it should be clear what exact type is recommended, because using the wrong type can, for example, increase dryness, which we don't want. The next symptom of emptiness of yin uh, to discuss is insomnia. We will try to understand how to come, how come that the empty fire causes insomnia through disturbing the spirit of heart. Insomnia is connected with the functioning of the nervous system and brain. In what way the heart is connected with brain in this case? From the point of view of physiology, increased acne is associated with tonus of sympathetic nervous system. Herewith, the fire doesn't go over the absolute values and the increase of the sympathetic system itself is of an artificial nature as the sympathetic system gets tense in response to the slackening of the parasympathetic system or slackening of yin. Modern medicine doesn't explain this phenomena in, in, in any way. Tension of the sympathetic system means tension of the sympathetic system and nothing else. As a result, such people have a higher heart rate. The value of the heart rate typical for them is uh, 83 85 beats per minute, which is an upper border of the norm. There is a specific parameter called minute volume of the blood flow. This value equals 5 6 liters of blood pumped by the heart within 1 minute. The blood gets disturbed uh, the blood gets distributed to organs including brain. As a result of the high heart rate, minute volume of the blood flow gets slightly increased, thus giving more blood to the organs, warming them up. That's why the people suffering from empty fire usually feel hot and as for the cycle of sleep and wakefulness, they feel like going to bed only after midnight or time close to that. There is an experiment carried out by Professor Pokrovsky described in the textbooks of Russian medical universities. The experiment showed that when the sign node generates the electromagnetic impulse, it makes the heart contract. If the sign node generates an electromagnetic pulse uh, with a high frequency, the heart would be contracting more frequently and the sign node generates them because the influence of the sympathetic nervous system of the sinus node is relatively increased and the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system uh, uh, and the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system which on the contrary reduces the heart rate is reduced in the condition of high frequency of electrodes, the stimulation flow is increased, which tones the reticular formation. I'm sorry, and the reticular formation participates in the process of switching of phases of the cycle of sleep and wakefulness. Let's let's check uh, the main indicators of cardio intervalogram in emptiness of yin followed by insomnia. We'd see tension of pranavata, sadhaka pitta, or the fire of mind, tension of pachaka pitta. And of course, we'd see deficiency of avalambaka kapha. Here you can see a very popular Western herbal composition, which has become a foundation for many other herbal compositions. The components of the compositions are Leonoros or motherwort, critigers or red hawthorn, um, gnafalmum, gnafalmium, I'm sorry, uliginosum, and aroina, aronia milanocarpa, I'm sorry. Uh, the properties of uh, gnafalum and aronia are not described in oriental medicine, so we can only describe them from the point of view of modern pharmacology.
Gnafalmum and uh, aronia have an antispasmodic sedative and hypertensive effect. It is important that combination of sedative and hypertensive effect work towards the normalization of the regime of sleep. Another component of the composition is Leonorus. Its formula is Vata minus Kapha neutral Pita plus. Its constitution is spicy and bitter taste, cold energy, spicy taste after digestion. As it has a cooling energy, it soothes pita. It has a strong sedative effect and lowering the heart rate that is speeded up in emptiness of yin, as we already mentioned. It also has a slight hypertensive effect. This herb is presented in the dominating proportion in the composition. It is not all that simple or with critigus. Having a sore taste, a sore vipak and hot energy, it increases pit. So if we want to achieve a sedative effect, the presence of this herb in the composition becomes questionable. It can be beneficial for the cerebral blood circulation, lowering the heart rate in future, uh, but if it is more urgent at the moment to remove pita, uh, critigus is not preferable. Now let's turn to Ayurveda and check what herbal composition is there for insomnia in emptiness of yin. This composition consists of Vacopa Manieri, Nastradachis Jatamansi, Vitania Somnifera, Acorus Calamus, Santalum Alba, and Glyceriza. This plant takes the first place in the rate of herbs beneficial in treatment of emptiness of yin. Uh, it has a cold energy and sweet vipak. It is a great component to harmonize pitta and vata, which is necessary to soothe the corresponding regulation systems. That is, that is why it is a great herb to fight with fits of anxiety and insomnia. Jatamansi is a remote relative of valerian. If you are making any notes of the lecture, mark it with an exclamation point. It is forbidden to use valerian in emptiness of yin. It would only agitate you more and worsen the insomnia because of its hot properties. Jetamansi is a highland valerian. It has a cooling energy without tamasic effect such as valerian possesses. Due to its cooling effect and specific combination of gunas, it soothes all three doshas. If we check a unique action, uh, which is, which in Sanskrit is called Prabhava, uh, we'll see it is Bhutagna, uh, Bhutagna uh, and Manas Rogagna. Manas Rogagnata is uh, all the disorders of mind. Bhutagna tells us that Jatamansi can be used in complex uh, psychiatric diseases, uh, such, uh, which in Ayurveda are related to Bhuta Vidya. The next component is uh, ashwagandha, goes in the composition in a smaller proportion. proportion. It is of a hot energy, it soothes kapha and vata. Ashwagandha is very useful in state of nervous emaciation. Insomnia always has consequences. Accumulated insomnia leads to nervous emaciation, so the intake of the remedy, not only before going to bed, but also during a day, would be helpful in inhibiting asthenia. A chorus columnus, uh, in Western herbal therapy, a chorus columnus is used in gastrointestinal tract disorders as a secretory remedy. But Western medicine is not aware of the fact that its prabhava is uh, medhya, meaning cleansing the mind. Even though a chorus columnus is of a hot energy, it is to solve problem of anxiety, hysteria and different neurological diseases. Santalum alba, this very herb due to its strong cooling energy is able to lower the fire, remove insomnia and anxiety of pita type. Uh, it is possible to substitute Santalum alba with Nelumba nucifera as it also has a great cooling effect. It lowers both vata and pita and increases kapha. Green and black tea with lotus is quite available in the market and for people of pita vata type it must become favorite because it claim, calms the mind, it cools and supplies yin. Licorice or yashtimadhu has a good soothing effect for vata and pita and it's necessary component to supply yin. 
Yes, here is glycerize or licorice. Analyzing the sources of traditional Chinese medicine, we would find a very simple and effective effective folk recipe. It is recommended to people suffering from insomnia, especially to elderly people, to eat millet, po millet porridge with unabi or Chinese date. It has sweet taste and neutral energy. It is commonly used in a high heart rate and insomnia as a sedative remedy. Uh, its compound of uh, micro elements makes it extremely effective. Another method to help such patients is Shiradhara that can be applied 3-4 times a week. The duration of the session is 20 minutes. Shiradhara is a slow dripping of oil on the head. The procedure has the strongest sedative effect and effect of cleansing of mind. It soothes not only pranavai that is connected with tension of vata dosha, but also sadhaka pita connected with the increase of fire uh, in pitta constitution. It is important that Shiradhara is carried out uh, with the usage of oils based on Brahmi. In some cases, uh, to soothe Sadhaka by Shiradhara, the specialists use milk instead of oil. It is a tricky method of treatment, so it is to be carried out only by a specialist who knows the nuances of the procedure. In other case, you can get the re reverse effect when the patient would get irritated and upset. The point called a strong streak is directly recommended to treat anxiety and insomnia. Uh, as this point is located in the area of hair growth, methods of influence are limited. Usually a long needle with Moxa is used to influence the point. Slight moxibuction of the point brings a great effect. You can also use Veda laser. Nevertheless, there is a presence of heat. It is an empty heat. So, warming up is not dangerous and can be really beneficial. In Ayurveda, there is an equivalent of this point called uh, Shivarantra, I'm sorry, or Marma opened to Shiva. To find this point, you need to count uh, 12 angulas posteriorly from the in interval between the brows. According to Vasantlat, this point is great in regulation of tarpaka kapha and stimulation of cerebral blood circulation. It is used when there are problems with falling asleep and insomnia. It removes agitation. It is suitable to apply shiradhara and acupressure as well as acupuncture with the use of a long needle with moxa. Another point useful in treatment of insomnia is is murdhni or marma of movement or the master of all the marmas. You can find it 10 angulas back from the interval between the brows. Stimulation of this point with Brahmi oil would also bring a great sedative effect. And the last point is Brahmarangha or opened to the creator. It is the best point of regulation of Sadhaka Pitta, thus helping to get rid of insomnia and agitation. You can influence the point using oils based on Brahmi or Jatamamsi. The next state that is typical for people of Pitta Vata type with emptiness of yin is a chronic uh, pharyngitis, uh, laryngitis and tonsillitis. Such a predisposition is connected with a lack of moistening of the mucosa. It creates a pathogenic environment in the throat. There are certain bacteria in the throat that help us to maintain the healthy environment. In case the environment doesn't get lubricated enough, uh, there appear microinflammation areas that may cause a disease. Beside the function of forming a watery environment, mucosal secre secretion has a protective function. Um, uh, Myrimidase enzyme, for example, has a strong bactericidal effect. Secretory immunoglobulin A and re uh, RNAs and enzymes that are also effective in fighting with viruses. But aside that, mucosal secretion, secretion has a great reparative action for micro cracks and damages that may occur in the process of eating and chewing. In sufficient lubrication, the cracks get uh, covered with epithelium, 
with a short period of time. Another problem for these people may become an insufficient uh, parasympathetic regulation. Let's see what happens in this situation from the point of view of microbiology. Normally, uh, salivary glands that moisturize the mouth uh, and upper floors of the of oropharynx are stimulated by the sympathetic and parasympathetic parts of the autonomic nervous system. Parasympathetic system is uh, the very part that is responsible for secretion. Saliva becomes fluid and produced in vast. Um, insufficient action of parasympathetic influence leads to dryness. In the mechanism of secretion, complex transport systems are also involved that uh, participate in secretion of sodium ions uh, to the initial saliva, which effectively removes water from the vessel gaps in the in the senior cells. Excessive osmolarity of intestines hinders the process of secretion of liquid saliva, and the osmolarity may be considered as uh, an equivalent of fire for this constitution type. Tendencies of changes in subdoshes and chronic laryngopharyngitis. It goes without saying that you see the low level of avalambaka kapha in combination with the low level of badhaka kapha. Badhaka kapha is the fluid that participates in taste reception, including all the functions of saliva, so the tendency to insufficiency of this subdosha should be quite noticeable. On the other hand, Pranavata as the increase of tension um, and Pachakapita as the increase of uh, fire should be in excess. Problems in functional systems and chronic pharyngitis are classically connected with the lungs channel and here we would see inflammatory processes connected with this tension. As for the clinical herbal therapy, there is a good herbal composition suggested by Professor Korsun. Let's analyze it from the point of view of traditional Chinese medicine. One of the components uh, is uh, Matricaria chamomilla, which are, we already discussed and said that it has a great anti-inflammatory and reparative effect. The ideal component for this constitution is Plantaga Meyer. It has a great secretory and anti-inflammatory action. Red raspberry, uh, though its cooling energy lowers uh, pita due uh, to its bitter, dry, and light characteristics, it can increase vata. In long term usage, uh, it can increase vata, so we should be careful with it. So, to benefit from its anti inflammatory effect, one may use it for a short period of time. Uh, the next component is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus lowers vata and kapha due to its hot energy and it's neutral, neutral for pita. Its presence in the composition is justified by its antiseptic, anti-inflammatory and uh, expectorant action. Hypericum, uh, hypericum is well known by its antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory effect. It also has a soft stabilizing effect on the cellular, cellular membrane, anti-allergic and immune stimulating action. It has cold energy, so we need uh, so we need to lower the fire, but in a long-term long use it will still stimulate vata. In general, the composition is not perfect, but it's quite balanced and uh, can be useful in an emptiness of yin. As for aromatherapy, the classic combination of eucalyptus and sage is widely used in aromatherapy in chronic tonsillitis. Let's check the usage of these oils. Uh, let's check if the, the usage of these oils would be beneficial in treatment of chronic tonsillitis for people suffering from emptiness of yin. We have already checked the properties of eucalyptus and <coughs> found out that it lowers vata and kapha, being at the same time neutral for pitta. As for mint and sage, they have this uh, hot energy that increases pitta, so it's quite reasonable to have doubts that this aroma composition is preferable for this specific syndrome. In case we deal, uh, we're dealing with kapha vata constitution, this composition sounds like a perfect one. But as we're dealing with pitta vata constitution, it is better to avoid this aroma recommendation. Herbal composition of uh, Alek Viktorich Sarokin includes Glyceriza glabra, uh, Alfea officinalis, 
Rumix uh, polygonacea uh, and echinacea angustifolia. Uh, let's check characteristics of these uh, herbs and try to analyze why they are beneficial in chronic tonsillitis and emptiness of yin. Althea officinalis uh, has sweet taste, heavy, moistening guna, cold energy uh, that uh, is perfect for pita vata people. It can increase kapha or be neutral in short-term use. Echinacea angustifolia is of a cooling energy, so it lowers the inflammatory fire. But due to its spicy taste and spicy vipaka in a long-term use, it can weaken kapha and strengthen vata. Here, echinacea is used in an immune, as an immune stimulator which is an important help to the immune cells of the mucosal membrane in the fight with chronic inflammations. Uh, Rumix polygonacea possesses even stronger detoxification and lymphocleansing effect. It is quite popular in Europe. It is also great in reducing the inflammatory fire and can lower kappa and increase vata in a long-term use. This herb should be accompanied by the herbs uh, porters and uh, pharmacology support uh, presented by remedies having an effect of the immunocorrection. This composition may be used by choice with a combination of the remedies of immune correction providing components of bacterial walls, uh, lysates, thus by dissolving this tablet the patient get, gets the cells of the immune system fighting with potential agents that can cause inflammation more effectively. There is a unique point, Hagu, influencing this point uh, through massaging it up to the painful sensation or through warming it with a needle with moxa or through physiotherapy, would have very powerful effect as it is located in the channel of colon that can even cut the disease off on the stage of its development in the throat. Uh, an equivalent of this point in Ayurveda is um, is Angustha Mula point, translated as Marma of the root of the big finger. This point is able to control Pranavata effectively, control stress and tension, pit of the liver, uh, supervise inflammatory diseases of ENT organs, especially sin sinusitis. Next syndrome to talk about in the clim is the climacteric syndrome or empty fire that burns the body of a woman in later life. Specialists of Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine managed to find appropriate and easy methods of treatment of the syndrome. The syndrome manifests itself in later life of the female as a dehydration of the body. As a result of, of it, a woman gets a whole package of emotional issues typical for the syndrome as well as dehydration, dryness of skin and hair. This all is based on the restructuring of the water electrolyte balance in the result of hormonal changes. Many of you may know, may know that the main cause of all the climacteric symptoms is a sudden decrease of estrogen. Women would get tendency to more frequent diuretic urges which would only increase dehydration especially for this constitution type. On the other hand, the decrease of the level of estrogen reduces the risk of osteoporosis. Betapal's device would show that people of this constitution who have clinical development of the climacteric syndrome should pay attention to Ranjaka Pitta. Ranjaka Pitta is connected with liver and steroid metabolism, uh, th which take place in liver. Any steroid not associated with, uh, with protein, uh, uh, not bounded with protein, I'm sorry, going through liver, should uh, would uh, disintegrate, so we may say that liver strictly controls the concentration of the steroid hormones in the blood. Tension of Ranjaka Pitta is associated with tension of digestive processes and Pachaka Pitta on the background of low Avalambaka and increased Pranavata. As for the functional systems or, or channel system, the most important channels would be kidneys channel, uh, pericardium channel and three heaters channel. These three channels would reflect the level of the syndrome in the meridian step. Ways of prevention and treatment. In Pitavata constitution, women may suffer from smearing bleeding, thus getting also the loss of hemoglobin and life force. 
This herbal composition is usually prescribed uh, when the, pro then the problem has already manifested itself and it is used first of all to stop the bleeding. It consists of uh, Capsella bursa, uh, Achella minifolium, Polygonum aviculari, Urtica dio dioica, Sanguisorba officinalis and Alfinia officinarium. All of these plants has a direct hemostatic action. One must uh, realize that this is a very effective herbal composition when it comes to bleeding. So in a long-term usage one should control the hemostatic characteristics of blood as the situation may shift to the tendency of thrombosis. In case the, there is no bleeding one uh, may want to use uh, pathophysiological herbs effective uh, from the perspective of the issues we described earlier. Many specialists of Ayurveda such, of, such as David Frohli, Atreya Smith and Vasad Lad recommend the following herbal composition which consists of five components. This herbal composition is better to be taken in the form of the milk decoction accompanied by the intake of 10 uh, to 30 milliliters of aloe juice or 10-30 drops of aloe infusion and here aloe would be the key component. Asparagus racemonis or Shatavari is a unique plant. This is the second remedy after Brahmi in the rate of the most effective remedies for this state. Due to its cooling energy, sweet taste, heavy features and sweet vipak, uh, it adds kapha greatly and reduces pita and vata, which is exactly what we need. Moreover, the plant has rabhava or rejuvenation due to the fixing of steroid uh, steroidogenesis processes. Thus, Shatavari is effective not only for infertility and impotence, but also for problems connected with menopause and reproductive system in general. Symphytum officinale, uh, first of all, has a very strong reparative effect. It is great in restoration of tissues. In the state of hormonal restructuring, it is important to use symphytum as a shield that would prevent negative development. Uh, Cuperus rotundus, in a long term use, it increases vata and lowers pita due to its cold energy. It is widely known for its ability to regulate female menocycle. The long term usage of this plant alone, with no combination with uh, any other herb which would compensate its strong influence on vata, is not recommended. Another beneficial plant is. Uh, is Gavaripala. It has special prabhava of a uterine tonic. It has a it, it is contraindicated to pregnant, pregnant women as it may cause uterine tonus and miscarriage. Due to its cooling energy, it is effective in treatment of inflammations. In Ayurveda, it is also known as a regulator of a menstrual cycle. Saffron makes this composition more uh, powerful. It is well known for its restorative and rejuvenating effects as it prabhava is uh, aphrodisiac. It is considered that saffron can be of two types of action. Uh, it can have a tridosha shamaka effect, in other words it soothes all doshas. Or it can have kapha vata gnata effect, meaning it soothes kapha and vata uh, more than pita. Here you can see a picture of a very friendly aloe and it really should become uh, a friend for people with emptiness of yin. Different parts of aloe have different effect. Aloe pulp has oily and turbid characteristics while its root and peel have dry and light characteristics. In general its cold energy and a balanced effect between the pulp and the peel work towards harmonizing all three doshas, especially pitta and may be used in female disorders as a good anti-inflammatory adaptogens, as a soft laxative especially for pitta constitution and also as the strongest reparative remedy which restores tissues. That is why it is necessary to add aloe to this herbal composition to make it considerably more effective. 
To pour into or Jongju point is very effective in treatment of dehydration. Influencing the point by a warm wood cigar, cone, direct warming of the point of uh, physiotherapeutical methods would provide a very strong restorative effect for yin of kidneys. Besides, it would balance a hormonal environment of the reproductive system naturally. Men of Pitavata constitution in their turn have another problem of emptiness of yin which may be considered as an equivalent of the climacteric syndrome in women. The disorder is an involuntarily, uh, involuntary ejac ejaculation or pollution. To have one involuntary ejaculation per night is a norm, but in case of abnormality it can happen during a day which is very disturbing. Besides, it is really followed by the same autonomic symptoms as women have in climacteric syndrome. The tre treatment of this disorder is uh, really rather simple. Peony infusion in a quantity of 30-40 drops 2-3 times a day fixes the problem on the level of the nervous system so one would forget that he ever had such a problem. This herb is also useful for women who have strong autonomic manifestation of the menocycle and menopause disorder. As the plant possesses bitter and cold features, it lowers pita and restores kapha. Dahe or a great prosperity point can be beneficial for men in treatment of the disorder. You can influence it using a needle with moxa, cone, warm wood cigar or veda laser and veda quant devices. An equivalent to this point in Ayurveda is Paga point or, mam or marma of sexual pleasure. It is located just above the frontal articulation in the middle line and it may be influenced either through acupressure with the usage of oils containing shatavari or through direct influence by needle which is quite acceptable for marmas as marma therapy in its nature is an equivalent, equivalent of reflexive therapy. To conclude our lecture, let's talk about a common therapy for empty heat syndrome in deficiency of Avalambaka Kapha when the person of this, of this constitution doesn't have any well-expressed disorders of the syndrome. We'd like to introduce you several popular herbs in traditional Chinese medicine and the first is Rutsum Chinese. There is a whole story about this plant in one of the Chinese tractates. Once upon a time, one high-ranking Chinese official was coming back from a business trip to speak the modern language. Uh, he saw a young woman on the road. The woman was punching an old man. The official got agitated and came to them to protect the old man. Shame on you, he said to the lady. How dare you to hit someone who's that older than you? The young woman replied, Oh, it is my grandson I'm punishing. The official got stunned. Then the woman told him all, that all the residents of her village use Lutsum Chinese as a restorative, rejuvenating and anti-tumoral remedy that is why she looks so young. Another useful plant is Chrysanthemum morifolium. In traditional Chinese medicine there is a vast of uh, remedies, drugs, uh, and products containing chrysanthemum. There is a chrysanthemum vine, wine and chrysanthemum beer. In European tradition the analog of chrysanthemum is jasmine, but it is less effective. Uh, white chrysanthemum is widely used as it removes wind, heat and good at restoring yin of liver. Dendrobium considered uh, as one of the most beneficial herbs as possessing cold and sweet characteristics. Uh, it restores yin of all organs, especially of kidneys, lungs. Rimania is one of the most famous herbs in traditional Chinese medicine. It has cold energy and bitter and sweet tastes. It, has great, it is great in lowering the fire, it supplies yin and produces liquids. It is widely used in treatment of constipation and, and reproductive disorders. If you have patients suffering from climacteric syndrome, constipation, insomnia, you can use a remedy which has been used for treatment for more than 1,000 years. It is Liu Wei Diu Huang Wan pills. 
Today, uh, it is a best seller in the drug market. It inhibits aging, prevents cancer, and solves all the problems connected with uh, constipation as it contains all the needed components uh, which were mentioned in the lecture. The food should be nourishing as for a vata constitution uh, with a domination of sweet taste and a bit of bitter taste to reduce pita, safely for vata. Spicy taste is contraindicated as it dries and increases heat. The food should be neither cold as it should be for pita type, nor hot as for vata type. It should be warm and cooked. Raw food is contraindicated as pita is dominating and there is tendency to vishama agni. It's better uh, to substitute oils with ghee. One of the most important things uh, here is water balance because through regulating the water balance you may have a chance to prevent development of disorders associated with this constitution type. It is better to create a schedule of the regular intake of water to take care of water nourishment of the body before its deficiency would cause troubles. We drink only when we feel thirsty. We can compare it to the watering of the dry soil when it already has cracks and the plants grew thin and weak. We should not wait till you feel thirsty to drink. You should supply water to the body regularly, especially if you deal with pita vata constitution type. Basically, sweet fruits are recommended for this constitution and some of them are listed here. You can see... You can see fruits that are recommended and some fruits that contraindicated such as for example apricots, cherry that is to be taken in small quantity. Vegetables As for vegetables it is important to remember that raw eating is contraindicated, it is not recommended. It is better to exclude vegetables increasing pita directly such as tomatoes, avocado, spicy pepper, chili and raw onions. Almost all the crops are allowed except for corn, buckwheat, rye and dry cereal. Legumes. One should exclude legumes. Only mash, tofu and chickpeas are recommended. If you use other legumes, you should combine them with the needed spices to compensate. Nuts and seeds are allowed except for fried and salty ones. You should also avoid nuts and seeds possessing the hot energies such as walnut, hazelnut and cashew. Oils. Uh, plant oils are preferable as they have less of a warming effect than the animal oils. And the ideal situation would be if you substitute oils with ghee. Spices. It is natural when people of Pita Vata constitution get addicted to sweets as, the, as sweet taste balances their nature. You may use non-refined sugar if needed or fresh honey as old honey possesses characteristics that would increase Pita. Milk products are highly recommended as they uh, have a great restoration uh, effect in case of emptiness of yin. You should only restrict the quantity of cultured milk foods and salty cheese as they would increase pita. As for the products of animal nature, traditional Chinese medicine prefers seafood, which they call the ocean of yin energy. Pork, mutton and mollusks are prohibited as they increase pita. For non-vegetarians, white meat is allowed as it has lower heating characteristics. To conclude, remember four herbs important for pita vata constitution type. You can see them here. Brahmi, Jatamansi, Shatavari and Aloe. An intake of these herbs periodically, seasonally or regularly would help to prevent or treat the disorders of pita vata constitution. Uh, dear friends, thank you for your attention. Here, here you can see our contacts. Goodbye.